Hey, how's it going? Gareth James here for mttpokerschool.com and this is the Hand of the Week. This is taken from the final table of the Sunday Hand Game. If you want to get involved next week or in the weeks uh, coming up, then all you need to do is follow the instructions in the description uh, down below. So this hand starts four-handed and the blinds are 25500 with a 60 chip ante. And you can see that it folds up all the way around to Joe's. And given that the effective stack size, um, which is Aerotop stack, because he's got the shorter of the two stacks, and that's what we call the effective stack, given his effective stack is 11 big blinds, very, very easy jam here uh, for Jokes. Now, I just want to look at uh, today the difference between a chip UV shove and a chip UV call, and then what sort of effect um, ICM would have on, this, uh, on the shove and on the call. So if, for example, this is the bubble of a nine-man sit-and-go, so three places get paid and uh, one guy is going to go home with nothing, then it's going to have an effect on the ranges that we can shove and the ranges that we can call. So first of all, then, I'm going to load this hand into uh, Hold on Resources Calculator. And we're going to see that Joe's can go ahead, make a shove 64% of hands. And then if we click this little button here, we're going to see that Aerotop can call with 43% of hands. Now, the thing is that you know, if we open this up, we have to think about, okay, is there a top going to call as wide as this? And if we think that he's going to be calling much, much tighter, uh, maybe, you know, maybe even something as tight as this, um, give him every ace. Okay, so 28% instead of 43%, uh, then I'm sure you can guess what's going to happen Joe's can now go ahead and he can shove any two cards in this situation. So that's just from a purely chip EV standpoint. But if we just go back and run this again, just to get the original numbers back, you can see it's 64% and 43%. Now, if we went for um, an ICM model where the top three places got paid, so first prize was 50% of the prize pool, second place was 30%, and third place was 20%. Then we can run the calculation again. And we can see now that Joe's can now go ahead and shove almost 93% of hands. And that's simply because Aerotop's calling range has tightened significantly. Now, again, if his range tightens even more than this, because it's a bubble, maybe you know cares about the um, cares about the, the uh, about, about cashing in this tournament, then maybe his uh, his calling range is even tighter. Maybe it's even something like this. At which point, you know, even a 3-2 offsuit in Joseph's shoes is going to be a very, very profitable shove. So, a few things to just think about in this situation. There is a huge difference between a chippy B shove and chippy B call and an ICM shove and an ICM call. Now, if we go back and have a quick look at this, as you can see, if this is on the bubble, if Aerotop calls and loses, he's out, he goes home with nothing, Joe adds uh, 5,000 plus the blinds and antis to his stack. Uh, he has a greater shot at winning more money. Um, but the only two people really to benefit from this sort of collision, as it were, is Bubba Gubba in the cutoff and Pizza Pina on the button. Because basically they folded their way to a cash. So that's something really important to, uh, to think about. So generally, when you're on the bubble, you should be calling much, much tighter. Now, if you know that your opponent is ICM aware and is going to be calling that much tighter, then you can go ahead and you can shove ridiculously wide from the small blind. Now, I know a lot of players that are not shoving anywhere near wide enough from the small blind in sort of open play, as it were, um, you know, further in, into the tournament, you know, maybe we're sort of in the middle stages or even in the early stages, they're really not shoving wide enough from the small blind. But it's really, really criminal to not be shoving wide enough on the bubble because you can put an enormous amount of pressure on arrow top here on the bubble, his calling range should be ridiculously tight and therefore we should be going very, very wide. As you can see, Joe does go ahead and shove here. And I mean, A6 offsuit was going to be a shove anyway, whether we think about Chip EV or ICM. But it would have been really nice to see um, Joe have a hand like 3 to offsuit and take the shove in this situation, simply because arrow top uh, has, is going to have a really hard time calling on the bubble. He does call and it runs out the arrow top takes that one down. So just to recap them, definitely go ahead and use this software. It's really, really useful for comparing 
Chippy V models to ICM models. Um, you could also uh, look at bubble situations earlier on in the tournament. So maybe you know, if you're playing multi-table tournaments, then you can look at bubble situations then as well. And maybe I'll look at that in a future video about how to do that because it's a slightly different process. Um, but just to, to recap how we went through this, we created a basic hand. I'll just pull this down so you can see. And we made sure the stack sizes are uh, correct in here. You can just literally copy and paste your hand history from any software like Poker Tracker or Holden Manager. And it should paste in uh, the blinds and antes to be correct. Then we, for our ICM model, we selected this model here, the Melmoth Harville ICM. And then we selected um, this, uh, just a full 50, 30, 20 um, sit and go payout. And then all we do is you click finish. Uh, and when we're running the chip EV model, we just change this to chip EV in big blinds. Okay, and then we just click finish. So some key things just to take away then from, from, this, uh, from this video is that when you're on the bubble, if you can put your opponent at risk, then you can shove ridiculously wide. If you are at risk and your opponent has put you all in on the bubble, then your range has to be very, very tight. But in a chip EV situation, we can shove very, very wide anyway, 64%. And then in the big blind, in aero top shoes, we can you know, we can call very, very light as well. Now, interestingly, if we just go back to the ICM model here, we can see that um, Ubergubba's range is 15.7%. Now, in a chippy V model, he can shove twice that. He can shove almost 30% of hands. But what's really interesting, I mean, that is interesting, because he's having to half his range that he can go ahead and shove here. And that's, you know, something, again, to think about when you're on the bubble. If you're the first person in and there's three players, or at least two players who can bust you, then your range is going to be you know, that much tighter. But what I think is really interesting is if we look at Pete Sapino's range, 35% in the Chippy V model, he can now go ahead and he can shove any two cards in the ICM model. Because really, if we look at it, if we just go back, this is a definite shove if we're thinking in terms of making profitable or plus dollar EV plays. Okay, in terms of chip EV, it probably isn't. But in terms of dollar EV, it definitely is. Because Joe's really isn't incentivized to call here on the bubble when he knows that there are two players who've got fewer chips than he has. Aerotop then is, you know, going to be calling with a similar range. Um, you know, probably, well, we can actually look at it. We can see if it's tighter or wider. Okay, so Aerotop suddenly now is calling 6.6%, uh, whereas before he was calling uh, much, much, uh, well, yeah, it was a bit wider than that. Let's have a look. Yeah, it was 22%. So very, very interesting that he, Pizza Pino can just put both these two players at risk and both of the players have to have a very, very tight calling range. So maybe this is a mistake. I mean, there are certain situations in, in tournaments where you don't necessarily have to just take an all-in or fold route. You can just min-raise, you can 3x it, you can do all sorts of things. You can even limp here. Um, but in terms of the model we've looked at, this would be a, a good shove from Pizza Pino's point of view. So again, definitely go ahead and use the software. Have a look at the difference between Chippy V and ICM. Maybe look at these spots where you feel like Jack's there off, really obvious fold. But actually, if we go into it, we see that Jack seven off is a very profitable shelf. So we'll leave that with you. Hope you enjoyed this video. I uh, hope you can take uh, stuff away from this and apply it to your own game. And I'll catch you next time. Cheers, bye-bye. Thanks for checking out this video. If you would like free strategy articles and YouTube videos and uh, free podcast episodes delivered straight to your inbox, then head over to mttpokerschool.com right now and sign up for our mailing list. I'll even throw in a free push fold guide and opening hand cheat sheet. What are you waiting for? Head to mttpokerschool.com right now.